because of overcrowding in some schools, which violates the standard operating procedures for fighting COVID-19. Government is considering the adoption of a double shift method of learning for when schools are reopened. And this means that if we have P1 class, this can apply probably to the classrooms that are big. You can uh, probably have half of the class in the morning up to lunch time. Then another class comes, starts at lunch time up to 5 p.m. The program is first going to be piloted in the refugees camps so that uh, we see how best it will work. Once it is working well, we should be able to implement in other, other, other parts of the country. Kaduchi was launching the Innovation and Inclusive Education Program for refugees and host communities. However, the minister said all oh, teachers will have to be vaccinated first before schools are reopened. When is the question? And two, we do not want to compromise the lives of our children when the infection rates are still high. The when will be informed by science. But the most critical thing now is to see how best our teachers can get vaccinated. And probably the university students who are above 18 years, if they can get also vaccinated, then we say yes. No, even if not all, good percentage, yes, they can stay at school comfortably. Due to the effects of COVID-19 among the refugees and their host communities, there is a growing fear that many of the school-going children have lost interest in school, which is likely to increase the number of school dropouts. And as a measure to encourage refugee children to stay in school, government of Uganda, through its development partners, are planning to give out a cash token to refugee children and children in host communities to encourage them to go back to school once government reopens them. We are also hoping that through this action here, we shall offer unconditional cash transfers to those children who, have, who face financial barriers to return to school. And hopefully, these cash transfers will encourage them to enroll. So the amount will depend on uh, uh, what challenges does this child um, have. Is it books? Is it uniform? You know, is it sanitary pads? 70 million euros, approximately 29 billion Uganda shillings, has been mobilized by an education consortium of several children, Finn Church Aid, Norwegian Refugee Council, Humanitarian Inclusion, and War Child. The money is part of the European Union grant, and it will also be used to build schools in refugee settlements. Our humble plea to you, Honorable Dr. Moriko, is this. It's imperative that we work together to ensure that the schools are reopened to learners. This needs to be done with all the required safety precautions. About 80,000 refugee children in different settlements and host communities are expected to benefit from the 21-month project. The project will be implemented in five settlements of Chaka, Changwari, Nakivare, Rhino Camp and Imuvepi. Currently, Uganda hosts about 1.5 million refugees. It is ranked as the largest refugee hosting country in Africa. 60% of the 1.5 million refugees are below the age of 18 years and are schooling going children in refugee settlement schools. Jingo Francis, NTV.